What's up, everybody? Welcome into the week 11 edition of the Cash Process. I'm your host, Ben Hostler. I am solo, a little solo pod today. Uh, Anthony's out of town. I don't know where he is. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know his results from week 10. I don't know anything about him. I don't know what's going on with him. If you guys know where he is, let me know. He's missing, MIA, off the grid. So no Anthony this week, so we got a little solo action. So before we get into the actual podcast, I do want to shout out my boy Alan Lem from Roto Grinders. Wrote a really good article, I think over the weekend, that kind of talks about the mental aspects of DFS. Uh, And I think it's an important read, man. I think you guys should all head over and read that article. Um, You know, it's important to kind of bake that into your thinking a lot of people that watch this show and follow me and Anthony, like you guys are grinders, right? Just like we are. Like, I mean, Anthony and I, I don't know about Anthony, but I know myself for sure. I've played every slate of pretty much every main sport, um, baseball, basketball, football, for the last like four to five years of my life. The only time that I've had off is that, uh, you know, when sports got shut down f- for COVID. And I know a lot of people are like that as well. Like you guys are grinders playing every slate uh, as well. Some people play more slates than I do because they're playing Showdown, they're playing PGA Showdown, where they're playing everything. So it's important to kind of bake that thinking and just kind of take a step back and look at things from the bigger picture. Uh, And it's also important to remember sample sizes. I I think myself, I've been pretty unlucky with DraftKings NFL this season. But, you know, when we talk about a three, four week sample size in NFL, that's just a really small sample size. It's not a daily sport. It's once a week, so we're talking about four slates, and a lot of you know random things, a lot of noise can happen, so it's important to keep your head down, just keep working hard, make the optimal plays, stick to your process, and eventually, you know, hopefully things will, will work out um, over the long haul, um, but it's a really good article, and, and I, I highly recommend uh, you guys go read it. Um, if we transition now to week 10, I wanted to get that out of the way at, at the beginning. Um, I did finally win on DraftKings in week 10. It felt really good. Uh, kind of, It had been a couple weeks, man. I forgot what it was like to, to get a W, so I uh, ended up winning. Thought I was going to lose because Stefan Diggs caught that late touchdown, like 30 seconds left in their game, and it like pushed me almost out of cash, and I was like, dude, I'm going to lose again off of some stuff at like the end of a game. Like I couldn't believe it, but I uh, did end up winning. Kyler had that late touchdown. Uh, Jerry Judy caught a late ball. I was shocked at how low owned Jerry Judy was. Couldn't believe it. Thought he was a really good play. If I would have known he was one two percent owned, I would have played even more of him. Um, but yeah, so I ended up winning, and now I'm excited because we can get back on track. Win this week. That's two in a row, and then get a double win next week with Thanksgiving in the main slate, and really close November out strong. So I'm excited to get to work on this week. Again, I have no idea what Anthony did last week. I don't know if he won. I don't know anything. Haven't heard from him. I don't know what's going on. So maybe we'll update uh, this weekend if he if he hops on the Sunday stream with, with how he did. But uh, we'll, we'll start with quarterback per usual, DraftKings pricing. Um, this will probably be a little shorter version of the cash process since I'm just talking to myself, but there's a lot of good teams that are not on the main slate this week. You got no Cardinals, no Seahawks, no Bucks, no Rams. Um, there's I don't remember what the Sunday night game is, but there's some good teams playing in the Sunday night game too, I think, uh, for fantasy. So I think that this is going to end up compressing ownership on a lot of guys that probably wouldn't usually get a ton of ownership, which could make this a good tournament slate in theory if some not so good plays end up as chalk. Uh, so we're gonna start at quarterback seventy three hundred Lamar Jackson against Tennessee. Um, I mean Lamar hasn't been what he was last year, and it's hilarious to me that seventy three hundred is the most expensive quarterback on the slate. No one above Lamar. I I don't know if I'll be playing him in cash, but definitely will be interested in him as the most expensive QB on the slate, maybe uh, his ownership just hasn't been that crazy this year in general. I think if you're spending up, Justin Herbert, 6,800 against the Jets makes the most sense. He has flashed rushing upside. He They like to give it to him. If you know if, if they get in close, he's tall. They can run a QB sneak pretty easily, and, and he'll get in. So I do like him at 6,800, but there's a couple cheaper guys, man that I feel pretty good about. I think this is a spend down at quarterback week, especially with no Kyler, 
no Russ Wilson. Um, I think Cam at 6,200 does deserve some attention because he does have the rushing uh, upside, even more so probably than Herbert, and he's 600 cheaper. And the matchup against Houston is really good. So I do think Cam warrants some consideration, but maybe not where I'll go in cash. I think the, de- the debate, like when I first looked at this slate last night, I was going to do this last night, looked at the slate, but I decided to save the, save the podcast for the morning. Jameis at 5,900 was what I assumed everyone was going to play. Uh, but then I kept looking, and for some reason, Joe Burrow, 5,500 on DraftKings. What is up with that price? I have no idea why he's 5,500. Sure, he's coming off a down game against Pittsburgh, uh, which you would you know assume. He's literally had two bad games this year, and they were against Baltimore and Pittsburgh. Uh, the Washington football team's defense is not either of those teams' defenses. And I know that Burrow has rushing upside, which is crucial for me for cash games. I really like to get that couple point floor. Now, he didn't run at all last week, but I'm going to throw that out against Pittsburgh. Uh, he does, you know, he could take it in close, similar to a Herbert. So I think 5,500 for Burrow is too cheap and definitely probably where I'm going in cash. Um, the reason for that being, I'm really excited for Jameis this week. I think that the Saints offense might actually be. I mean, I think they'll be better, but they're going to be way more fantasy-friendly with Winston at QB rather than Breeze. But the Taysom Hill thing is enough for me to knock him down for cash because I think what we see, I think we're going to see a lot of Taysom in the red zone on Sunday. And when you're talking about your quarterback getting pulled off the field close to the end zone, even if he's cheap, like it's just too much of a concern for me, right? Like Burrow's not leaving the field, so... I do think we're going to see a lot of Taysom on Sunday, even with Winston starting the game. So that's enough to knock him for cash games. For tournaments, I'll still be interested in Winston for sure, especially against Atlanta. But I think Burrow's probably the best best play as of now. And really, that's it. I mean, he's cheap. There's not a ton of guys to spend up on um, or guys that I like playing. So it's definitely an interesting slate uh, at QB. As far as running back goes, you're probably, especially if we're saving at quarterback, you're probably spending up at running back. And you have Kamara, 9,200 against Atlanta coming off a monster game. Now, Taysom coming in for Winston does hurt Kamara as well, especially if you factor it being potentially in the red zone. But Kamara's just so safe. I think that Kamara's ceiling rises a little bit with Winston throwing the ball uh, more so than Breeze. Winston threw to him a couple times when he came in last week. We know that Atlanta allows a lot of receptions to running backs under Dan Quinn. So I think he makes sense at 9,200, and I'm, I'm fine always spending up at running back uh, in cash games. Now, I will say FanDuel, Kamara's never a must for me on FanDuel just because it's not full point PPR. So if you don't want to play him on FanDuel, you probably don't have to, but he is probably a really good cash game play for me as of uh, Wednesday morning. Uh, and then you have Dalvin Cook at 9K against Dallas, another really good play. Would love to potentially jam both those guys in my lineup. I'm going to try all week to do that. Uh, Cook's just been a beast this year uh, when healthy. Um, and obviously Dallas defense has not been one that we're, we're shy of attacking. So I, I think those guys both, 9K, like we're going to need some savings if we play both of them, but I would like to, to spend up on both of them if possible. And then you drop down, like you have a bunch of guys in that next range, Nick Chubb, uh, you know, that are interesting, but not guys, Miles Sanders in that same game, I think is interesting, but not guys that I probably want to play in cash games. And that's because we have DeAndre Swift at 6,400 against the Carolina Panthers, a bottom five run defense in the NFL. Swift was announced the starter this past Sunday morning. I'm mad I didn't pivot to him once that happened because he ended up playing 73% of the snaps, a career high, with over 70% of the rushing attempts and the targets, went over 100 yards, scored, now gets a really good matchup against the Panthers. I love DeAndre Swift. So you guys know I'm a, I'm a big Jonathan Taylor long-term guy. But it's important to remember that before Jonathan Taylor's senior year of college uh, at Wisconsin, or maybe not senior year, I don't even know if he came out as a junior, whatever, before his last year at Wisconsin, DeAndre Swift was the de facto number one running back in that class. He was the guy that everyone that plays in the leagues that you can have college guys, he was the guy everybody wanted. So he has the pedigree. He can catch the ball. 
and he's a really good player, and he's looked good all year. Outside of that, he had like a drop in week one in the end zone. Other than that, he's looked great the whole year, and now they finally unleashed him. They started him and gave him the work that, that he should get. So it's always a concern with Matt Patricia that one of these other guys could come in, but with them announcing him the starter last week, you would assume that to continue with how good he played. It's a great matchup. 6,400. I mean, I'm playing Swift in cash. As of Wednesday, he's a great play, I think. Um, and then, you know, so if I'm playing him and I want to play the other two guys, that's the cash game pool. But we have to mention this Washington situation. Antonio Gibson is absolutely electric with the ball in his hands. Scored multiple times last week. He's in play at 5,500. But you know, against Cincy, but then you have this J.D. McKissick thing for DraftKings. Like, this is not a FanDuel play, but we can't ignore J.D. McKissick on DraftKings at 5,200 when the man has 14 and 15 targets over his last two games. That's 29, 29 targets over his last two weeks. That's insane usage. Alex Smith is checking the ball down to this guy almost every play. I mean, it's insane. I've never said like every, any time I had that game on, he was just checking down to JD McKissick. Uh, so I can't ignore that type of usage. So a dra- on DraftKings, he's going to be in play at 5,200 for me. I, I, I like Gibson at his price too, but the full PPR, like if you're racking up eight, nine catches, man, at 5,200, I feel like if it was anyone other than JD McKissick, getting 14 and 15 targets per week at the running back position, we would be running to jam them in, right? Like if DeAndre Swift had 15 targets last week, he'd be 80% out. He might be 80% out anyways. He probably won't be, but he'll, he'll be pretty owned. He's not going to be a secret. And then you got this Miami situation with Salvin Ahmed. He's 4.8K. If their guys are still banged up, you know, you could look at him, but McKissick's probably the lowest for me in cash games that I would go at running back. Pretty tight running back pool for me as of Wednesday. Switch over to receiver. We're going to need some value at receiver. I think if you're spending up, no DK, no Tyler Lockett. Thank God we don't have to debate that this week. Uh, Keenan Allen at 7,400 against the Jets is once again going to be the safest option. And then you have Terry McLaurin at 6,800 against a potentially once again banged up Cincinnati secondary. Don't want to go overboard on Washington, guys. But if we're playing Joe Burrow, it would make sense to have another guy from that game in. And McLaurin, even with McKissick racking up 15 targets last week, McLaurin still hit 18 DK points and did not score a touchdown. So the floor is still there. Um, And I, I'm a big Terry McLaurin fan in general. Since he had a really, really banged up secondary last week. So if that if that continues this week, like he's going to be in play. I don't like paying ceiling price tag for him because 6800 is kind of priced toward his ceiling but he's good enough that he could produce and if he finds the end zone you know he could have a, a really big game uh in this matchup so i do think he's in play still slightly prefer keenan but um you know mcclaurin's right there then we move down because i don't want any of these other guys really in that range for cash so we move down a little bit farther you have Justin Jefferson and Deontay Johnson priced back-to-back. I think both of these guys are great plays. Deontay, man, I moved off him on FanDuel on Sunday morning, and I was kicking myself because he had a huge game again. He has 21 targets over his last two games. Like, he clearly is kind of like the alpha in this this Pittsburgh offense, but there's just so many guys that it's tough for me. It, it could be personal like, it's probably a personal thing in my head. Like, it's just tough for me to trust him when you have Chase Claypool and Juju Smith-Schuster and James Washington. Like, there's just so many guys there that it's tough for me to to trust him in a cash game build. But then again, at the same time, he's cheap. He plays Jacksonville. He, he has been the guy getting the targets. So, you know, Deontay is going to be in play. Justin Jefferson, man, I wasn't super... I don't want to say super high on him coming out, but... I liked other receivers in this class better than him. I mean, he has just been an absolute beast uh, since they started giving him, since that first game when they actually put him on the field. Uh, Another really good game in primetime on Monday night, and I think he's in play at at 6K against Dallas, but, you know, I probably am not going to play multiple Vikings in one lineup 
So if I'm playing Dalvin Cook, it's probably going to be a slight lean towards Deontay over Justin Jefferson for me. Uh, Kenny Galladay, 1,000% will be in play if he is active at his price tag of 5,800. If he's out, we have Marvin Jones at 5,500. Marvin Jones has kind of been touchdown or bust, but once again scored last week. You know, uh, I'll consider him if Galladay's out, but again, probably don't want to play multiple Lions in one lineup, and I would lean towards Swift over Marvin if picking one. Jerry Judy is cheap again in the 5K range. Tough matchup on paper against the corners for Miami, but Jerry Judy, spectacular route runner, can beat any corner in the NFL. I'm confident in that. And with him only having 10 DK points last week, he's he was 2% owned last week in a much better matchup. No one will play him again. I'm fine betting on Judy weekly. Like, I think he's a good play again. I might actually prefer Judy to Marvin Jones, personally, uh, as of right now. Then you have Jacoby Myers right below 5K I'm interested in. Uh, target totals of 7, 14, 10, and 6 over his last four. Good matchup against Houston. I don't really want to trust a Patriots player in cash games, but if I was going to pick one, it would be Jacoby Myers. And then you have a, a cheap guy, Bales Boy, Jakeem Grant, 3,500, man. Scored last week, and they just didn't really move his price. Um, he's good. He's shifty. Uh, he can make a big play. And 3,500 is, is cheap. Like It's not like you know the matchup is super bad. Uh, I think it's a, it's a mediocre matchup. But he's 3,500. What does he need to do? I mean, he already showed you last week he can score. Tua clearly has a connection with him, giving him five targets each of the last two weeks. So, you know, you could do worse for 3,500. There's some other guys down there. Marvin Hall scored last week. But I think it, it, Myers and Grant are probably the two cheap guys with a lean towards Grant for me. I don't know if I want to play Jacoby Myers in cash. Like, Jacoby Myers is only a couple hundred less than Jerry Judy. I would probably rather play Jerry Judy even in a tougher matchup. So we'll wait We'll wait and see. Obviously, you, you have to be sure to check out the content. DFSCover.com, I write a free building blocks article every week, game-by-game game breakdown. Sam does a really good ownership report, which kind of tells you where the chalk's going and what he's doing with it. So be sure to check that out at the site on Friday. That about does it for receiver, man. There's some other guys you can make the case for, but I don't know. I would love to play Keenan, but I just don't know if it's going to be possible if I'm spending up on these running backs. Tight end is a wasteland per usual. Don't really want to spend up on any guys here, especially if I'm double spending on running back. Not going to be possible. So I think the three guys that stick out, TJ Hawkinson is so cheap after a three-point DK point game last week, but if Galladay's out, I will consider him. Uh, Austin Hooper did nothing last week, but you know that was a weird weather game. Really good matchup against the linebacking core of Philly. So I, I like Austin Hooper, and then uh, Logan Thomas, our boy from week one. I've played him a lot this year. Like, I'm fine. I, I keep talking about these Washington guys. Like, I don't want to have two Washington guys in one lineup, but I do think since he coming into last week, coming into week 10, they allowed the most fantasy points to tight ends, and he's 3,300, so I think he is in play. So one of those three guys will probably find their way into my lineup unless we get some weird news later on in the week. And then defense, man, I don't know. Defense is weird. I like the Browns at 3K. Should be able to get some pressure on Wentz if Miles Garrett's fully healthy. None of these cheap teams can get a ton of pressure on quarterbacks. So I don't know if there's like a a lock-in punt right now. Like you have Cincy, but Cincy had negative four points last week. Not really a shock with how banged up their defense is. I don't know. There's no punt defense that I feel great about on Wednesday morning. So it might actually be the Browns at 3K as my favorite defense or you can spend up and play the Steelers for you know the same price as Jacoby Myers or whatever you want to do there just a weird situation with with the defensive pricing but that about does it I've went through every position what I want you guys to do is please give us a thumbs up on YouTube and comment below who you're playing in cash games give me your lock of the slate one guy that you're locking in I know we normally get about a thousand views per show on YouTube So we should get 100 comments, right? 10% of the people watching this, give me a thumbs up and tell me who you're playing. It takes five seconds. Just do it below. I'll be excited to see who you guys are playing. Thank you guys for watching. Like I said, be sure to check out dfscarma.com for tons of free content. 
this pod went surprisingly smooth without Anthony. Uh, shocker. I know you guys will be shocked about that, but thank you guys for watching and uh, good luck this week.